To be honest, I thought this would be a super easy podcast episode because I love journal writing. But you know what? Upon doing it, I felt like it was a total roller coaster of emotion. It's a more personal one this time. So hey, this is Sarah's Bedtime Stories, episode 36. How journal writing helped me in my 20s. Story time. For me to share genuine stories about journal writing, my personal experience about it, I read my previous journals and it actually took me a week to finish reading them. Kasi parang bawat journal... It's a year of my life. Bawat kwento, bawat pahina na binabasa ko, I am seeing a Sarah that was and a Sarah that still is. I now understand why I didn't share my journals before. It's because my life was written there. You'd know what's in my mind, in my heart, everything that is about me. And it's so hard to be vulnerable to people. Kasi may mga tao na wala namang pakialam. <laughs> Meron din naman mga tao na baka gamitin yun against you. Diba? So, having said that, why did I still choose to share about journal writing this time? First, um, I did mention my reasons why I did podcasts. But other than those things, I remember I had a conversation with my close friend Maan before. Sabi ko sa kanya, Mans. Actually, it's in Kapampangan. So, I'll say it in Kapampangan para, para mas ramdam. Sabi ko sa kanya, Mans, putang may wala na ako kay Earth. Panabilin ko lang yung haring journals ko na eh. Pwedeng pakibihang, tit, sabi ko ganun. So, I was telling my friend that when I um, stop breathing, <laughs> sabi ko, ipamanan niya yung mga journals ko sa tao na to. Like, hanapin niya at ibigay niya yung mga uh, journal ko. And funny how my friend said, Heh, bakit mo naman panayan na mawala ka ba yung mo pabasa rin kwento mo? So, she said, Why will I wait for me to leave the earth before allowing other people to read my stories? Because of that, here it is. Upon reading my previous journals, I realized how it helped me in dreaming, in understanding myself and in appreciating life. Generally, if is summarize ko ang lahat, yun siguro yung pinaka na itulong sa akin ng journal writing. But that was so generic. Kung baga hindi yun mararamdaman. Parang pakiramdam ko kulang. So nung nagbasa ko ng unang una kong journal, yung talagang detailed, that was my 2017 journal. I found myself crying. Crying because I feel like I was able to relieve the moments na pwede pala yun. <laughs> Crying because I felt like I became better and stronger. Wow! <laughs> Namiss ko pala old self ko. I was 20 years old back then and I realized every lesson that I am sharing in my podcast, most of them I learned when I was around that age, 20 to 21. Alam mo yung habang binabasa ko yung mga sinulat ko doon, sabi ko sa isip ko, Ha? Dito ko pala yun nakuha. Dito pala yun nag-umpisa. Ah, kaya pala. Ganun pala. I remember one of the best lessons that I've learned that I wrote in my journal was sometimes if we cannot have the environment that we want, we have to create it. 
as a Gemini, if naniniwala kayo sa zodiac signs, <laughs> I do love freedom. Lalong-lalo na yung kalayaan ko na makapagsabi ng nararamdaman ko at ng naiisip ko. I am at my happiest when I am expressing my thoughts. Pero, I realize that we cannot always have that. Naranasan yun na ba yung pakiramdam na may gusto kang sabihin, may gusto kang iparating, pero pakiramdam mo, hindi ka naiintindihan? Yung kahit inexplain mo siya sa pinakamagandang explanation, pakiramdam mo, hindi yun sapat para maramdaman niya yung nararamdaman mo or maintindihan niya yung nararamdaman mo? And yung mas masakit, yung pakiramdam mo, kahit ang dami mo nang sinabi, hindi mo naramdaman na pinakinggan ka. I hate that so much. But I am just so blessed that I met a few people in my life na kahit hindi ko kaano-ano, binigyan nila ako ng pagkakataon para maramdaman ko yung pakiramdam na pinapakinggan ka. That's why these people are my favorite people. And to be honest, I'm not a strong, independent woman before in my 20s because I am so dependent with these people. To be honest, everything that scares me, that bothers me, that makes me happy, I always tell them. I always ask them for their opinion, for their advice. And I'm so lucky, I'm so blessed, because they have been there for me. They made me feel heard and understood. They made me feel loved. No doubt. No questions at all. It's just that life happens. It's forcing you to be strong. <laughs> you will realize that they will not be there for you always, forever. As much as you want them to be with you, it can't be. Because they have a life too. And maybe you're just a page or a chapter in their lives. And your life wouldn't stop there. You have to keep going. Because you have a life too. Kaya siguro yung laman nung journals ko are the words that I heard from them. Their advice, reminder, pambobola, and the conversations that I had with them. Kasi siguro naisip ko rin ng mga panahon na yun na baka kailanganin ko ulit ng sagot sa mga tanong ko. At kapag wala na sila, or wala sila sa buhay ko, baka makita ko yung mga sagot nila sa akin noon, and masagot nila yung tanong ko. And actually, it happened, totoo yun, na may mga pagkakataon sa buhay ko na parang gusto kong maka, magkaroon ng sagot sa tanong ko. And when I read my journals, dun ko na-realize na, ah, ito pala yung sagot. And I think this is how I started journal writing. I created the space for me and my endless thoughts. I had a constant friend, a best friend, yung hindi ako iiwan, a safe place to be who I am, where I can say anything, anytime. My journal has helped me feel that I will never be alone. And because I am free to write anything and everything, I got the chance to know who I am and what I really value in life. At first, I was also writing things that I hate. Kasi feel ko kapag may kinaiinisan ako at nanggigigil ako, feeling ko yung pagsusulat ko dun, na inilipat ko yung energy, yung ines dun sa papel. But later on, na-realize ko na parang ang swerte naman ng kinaiinisan ko. Kasi... Sakop nila yung space ng journal ko. Tapos, sayang yung tinta ng g para sa kanila, di ba? Charis. <laughs> Pero totoo. When I was in my 20s, 
lagi akong nagre-rant. Siguro na culture shock ako dun sa difference ng nag-aaral ka, tapos magtatrabaho ka. And one of my favorite people on earth told me na para pretty, I should avoid that. Eh ako, bilang sakto lang naman ang ganda ko at gusto ko maging pretty, ginusto ko talagang isabuhay yung sinabi niya. Gusto kong pakinggan, gusto kong gawin. It's just that when I was young, I felt like hanggat hindi ko na ilalabas yung inis ko, hindi maiibsan yung nararamdaman ko. So glad that I have my journal because I was able to release my emotions. I figured out the things I hate, the reasons why I get hurt, and the things that make me emotional. So, na-process ko lahat dahil nasusulat ko siya. So, naintindihan ko yung sarili ko dun sa mga negative side ko. If there is one thing that I knew about myself through my journals, I hate to miss someone. Ayokong nakakamiss ng tao. Kasi gusto ko, pag namimiss kita, yung totoong namimiss, ah. sinabi sa akin to ng kaibigan ko dati na meron daw mga nakakamiss na namimiss lang pero ayaw makita. Pero ako, yung pagkamiss na to, ito yung pagkamiss na gusto ko makita kita, makasama kita, makausap kita, ganon! Before, when I feel this emotion, hindi ko siya alam i-process. Parang, bigla ko na lang mararamdaman na parang bigla akong nalungkot tapos hindi ko alam yung dahilan. Tapos iniisip ko, bakit feeling ko may kulang? Feeling ko may mali. Pero hindi ko malaman kung ano. But with journal writing, when I feel this kind of emotion, I already know na may namimiss ako. Like, kapag naramdaman ko yung ganong emotion, ah, naranasan ko na to before. And it's because I am missing someone. But more than this realization, I found myself poetic when I miss a person. Wow! When scars become art. Wow! <laughs> so, just to sum it all up, and this is the first part of this episode, how journal writing helped me in my 20s. Number one, it gave me the assurance that I will never be lonely because my pen and paper or my iPod is there for me whenever I had this thoughts, worries, and everything. Yes, iba pa rin naman ang pakiramdam nung merong tao na makikinig sa'yo, nung yayakap sa'yo, or nung sasamahan ka pag umiiyak ka. But people come and go. That's what I realized in my 20s. So, Napakalaking bagay yung alam ko na meron at meron ako mauuwian at makukwentuhan because of my journal. That's one. And another thing is, it helped me in dealing with my emotions. Lalong-lalo na ako ayokong nagtatago ng nararamdaman. Ayoko na nagpipigil ng emosyon. Hindi ko kaya yun. Kaya malaking tulong sa akin na naintindihan ko yung mga emosyon ko para alam ko kung ano yung gagawin ko. Yes, I know that this podcast episode may sound medyo uh, malungkot, pero this is just a reflection of how journal writing has helped me in my 20s. This is just the first part. We have a next one coming up next week, so make sure to listen to Sarah's Bedtime Stories. This is Sarah. Good night. Mwah. Thanks for listening to Sarah's Bedtime Stories. If you enjoyed my podcast, please like and follow me on Facebook, Spotify, and YouTube. Just search Sarah's Bedtime Stories. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at at underscore Sarah's Bedtime Stories. Feel free to share your questions or stories with us at Sarah's Bedtime Stories at gmail.com. And who knows, your story might become the next episode.